everybody. Welcome back. We're working on our series doing a uh, two column layout. Now we're using HTML5, so we're gonna use uh, some more advanced CSS. We're ready to use some of this. And I wanna talk to you about how we would style this navigation bar from an unordered list of links into a horizontal bar of buttons that will take us to navigate through our website. Before I do it, you need to understand a little bit about um, why these unordered list of links go from top to bottom. It has to do with the fact that a, a list item, just like a header and a paragraph, is actually um, a block level tag. Now a hyperlink is an inline tag. And to prove it, I'm just gonna show a quick little demonstration of our HTML. So we're gonna look at our nav with the site nav over here, and let's just expand this out a little bit here. Okay, notice each list item, uh, I put them on their own line. But if you look at the page, they're also on their own line. If you type F12 on Chrome, it's going to get us the developer toolbar. And um, if we click on the little inspector here and we hover over our list item, you'll see that that list item that only has one little word, home, is as wide as it's containing wrapper, in which case that div on the outside, remember the div that was on the outside, this div with the class of wrapper, remember it had the automatic margins. So that kind of constrains all items inside the div of which the list items are. But even though the words are kind of small, they all take up the entire width of the existing screen it has available. It, and it's not, it has nothing to do with line returns. Some people might think, well, you just put it on another line. Well, if we get rid of our line returns, we put them all onto one line of code, okay? They're all in line 19, and I save my changes. That does nothing to the way this is laid out, okay? See how that's still, they're still take up the entire width of the screen. Now, the hyperlinks, on the other hand, are actually inline tags. And because they're inline tags, if we get rid of our list items and we line them all up, in fact, let's do it this way. Let's not even line them up. Let's each put them on their own line, but we're going to get rid of the other list items. So we have one li here, and then we have one hyperlink here using the anchor tag, another one on its own line, another one on its own line, and one on here. They're all a separated, each one a different line of code. Yet, when we save it and we hit refresh, they're all side by side with only one bullet point on the left. Well, that's because hyperlinks are inline tags. And it doesn't matter that you add extra line returns, they just are only as wide as they need to be. Well, we're gonna take advantage of a CSS property called inline block. And what's beautiful about it is they're going to behave like they're inline, but they're also going to behave like they're block level tags. Okay? So I'm going to drag this over a little bit so it's a little easier for the uh, screen to see. And so let's undo all of our changes and uh, let's take a look at the inline blocked uh, property. Excuse me. The property is called display, the value is called inline block. In order to go over this, a great website, it's an awesome resource, it's learnlayout.com. You go to the table of contents, you will see um, a lot of layout techniques. And so we were talking last time, we did our two columns using a floated type layout. Well, now we're going to look at the display called inline block and how you can even do layouts with it. So we look here, it used to be we'd have to float, right? And then remember, on our footer in our layout, we actually did a thing called clear float. So let's take a look at the layout style sheet. Notice our article with a class of content was floated to the left. And without clearing the float on our footer, that thing wrapped around. So let's go ahead and save our changes. Without a clear, using that float technique, when I hit refresh, Look what happens. Hold on. Now, now I made this too long. One second while I fix that. Okay, I'm just going to get rid of that last paragraph in the aside. 
which is over here. So I get rid of it, save my changes, go back here and hit refresh. Let me turn this tool off. Now you'll see that the footer is, is basically positioned to the right of our floated item because it's so big. Well, we had to clear that in order to get it to work. And that's kind of more the old school way of doing it. Okay. So with inline black block, we actually take care of it. So let's take a look at that page again. Now you'll see on here they had to actually clear it. Now if we do display inline block and we set the width, what will happen is each of our divs will line up as long as they fit inside of the window. And then if they don't, the next one just spills over to the next page. So it's like they're inline, but they're also displayed as block. See what happens if I resize it? Because it's inline block now, they only take up the width that they need. And this last div doesn't need clear at all because inline block takes care of it. Okay? So that's what we're going to do on our nav bar. But we can also use that to change our layout and get rid of that clear float. Which, by the way, that whole thing with floated items really does create a lot of problems, not only with our uh, footer here, but if we had made our layout on the, um, if we made our CSS on our nav bar, our unordered list, if we floated items, which is one technique, then this content might actually appear on the side where it doesn't belong. So we're going to use that to fix that. Okay. Also, I just made one little change on my uh, list item here on my nav bar. Hopefully we got that fixed. I've got everything back. The last thing I want to do is we have a link to the style sheet, the general one, a link to our layout. We're going to create one more link, and this time it's going to be on a style sheet called navigation. Now, the reason why we're doing this, of course, is we're separating our concerns onto separate style sheets. When you're done doing all this, you might wish to actually wrap them all into one big style sheet. Um, and that way you reduce the number of times you have to call up the server. And that's not a bad idea. But for now, we're going to keep them separated as we're still working on styling it out. So we have a layout style sheet. I click on this window. I choose new. And this is going to be navigation. So I save it as navigation.css. I just want to make sure I save it in the same folder as my other CSS style sheets. Paste it here. Make sure I'm in the right folder. Yes, I am. Click Save. Now I can begin working on our navigation. Be careful, though. When you work on your navigation, understand that this unordered list in our nav is not the only unordered list we have on our page. So one of the things we're going to need to do is target our navigation on here. Now there's ways that we can target this. We can, for example, target by targeting this nav with a class of site nav and then an unordered list inside of it. So watch how we do that. So I can put on here, I can just put site nav space ul. And at that point, I've targeted only our unordered list inside the site nav. Now, to see if we've done this, let's remove our bullets. You do it by list style type of none. And that will remove the bullets. Now, let's test it. i got to make sure everything's saved. Template saved. Navigation is saved. I go back here, hit refresh. My bullets are gone. That means um, I have targeted the site nav UL. But if I look over here on my sidebar, I still have bullet points. Another way we can do this, though, is we can put on here class equals. Now, one of the things we can do is we can actually reuse the class of site nav on here. So what we can do is instead of that, we can actually get rid of that and target it this way, ul.sitenav. And that way, we're targeting our unordered list. Ultimately, we're going to have to target our list items. And I don't think it's a good idea to add class to everything. So we're going to target our list items inside of our site nav UL. So you're going to write UL dot site nav space li. Okay. Now, remember the list item is the item that which is the part that was the block level tag. So we're going to change the way it's displayed. So we're going to choose display inline 
block. By doing that, that allows it to line up side by side. If I set no other settings here, watch what happens. I hit refresh, and I blocked something here. Not working. Okay, sorry, I forgot to save my change where I added the class to the UL. And so once I did that, and I have both pages saved, so I save my changes on both, I hit refresh, and now I get it. Notice how there they are all, site, all lined up. The other thing you should notice, look at how home there's this big gap here. That's because our UL has some padding on it. Actually, there's another uh, target we need to do. Okay, so anyway, I get my developer tool out, I target the UL, and I was thinking, I was trying to get rid of that gap there. Turns out it's padding. So if we remove our padding from our UL, it gets rid of that padding that's on there. We already got rid of our margin. Um, I was trying this list style position, and that can position where our bullet list is, but we don't need to change that. So we just need to uh, get rid of our padding. So let's go do that in here. So we'll put on here, padding, zero. Removes all padding from our unordered list. Let's add it back into our list items. And the way I like to do it is by giving it two values. The first one is for top and bottom. So like we can do a 0.5 half an EM for the top and for the bottom and one EM on the left and the right. Save our changes. And now let's take a look at our nav bar. And now they're starting to get spaced out a little bit. Let's also add some colors to it. And I recommend you play around with the colors. Well, we'll take a look at the difference between targeting the colors on the list item versus targeting the colors on the anchor. Now, the anchor tag by default has underlines. And I don't think we need that for our nav bar. So we're going to get rid of that as well. And that's text decoration. We'll set it to none. So there's no underline. Save our changes. Hit refresh, no underlines. Now we're going to set a background color. And we'll put like a light gray on here. Um, E4, E4, E4. Save our changes. Hit refresh. And it kind of gets, now notice the hyperlink, there's all this little padding inside. All right, but let's add the background color instead to our list item. Save our changes. Hit refresh. Notice now we've got nice big gaps here. All right, but we still have a little bit of gap in between each of our inline block items. And so we probably want to get our developer tools to figure out what's going on there and try to target. We get our list item. And we scroll down here, we can see some of the things that are going on. If I go down to the bottom, I have some padding. Doesn't seem to have a border, but there's still some kind of a gap there around each of our list items. So if you don't like that gap, you have a couple options. One, it's actually not that bad because it does sort of create a separation between yours. You can also target your UL and you can give it a background color possibly even a different background color. And so to test that out, I'm just going to test it. I'm not actually going to code it. I click the UL, um, and on element style, I'll put a background, uh, and then we'll put on here, we'll put like EF, EF, EF. And now I have a different background color to sort of unify the nav bar, but our border looks a little bit darker. Okay, we're going to continue this on the next video. And on the next video, we're going to further style this using some newer CSS techniques, um, using rounded corners and things like that. And then we'll talk a little bit more about our typography on our general style sheet.